Good morning and good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are going to share something that is very interesting that is called Strategic Human Resource Management. And Strategic Human Resource Management, I'm going to explain to you what is the outline of Strategic Human Resource Management and how does it relate to us, the people around the organization. Have you ever heard the word strategic? As you can see, when, for example, that if you're working, as you can see, you can see the group of people having a meeting and sometimes the top manager or your manager will ask you Nasina or Rina or Celine please make sure that whatever we are doing is strategically positioned with the organization goals and the vision and the mission of the organization and also sometimes the top manager asks you to do thing that is strategically important to the organization so what does it mean the word strategic today it's an important day for us to discuss the word strategic and we're going to relay the mission and the vision and strategic of the organization with strategic human resource management. Normally, the word strategic, normally when we listen to the word strategic, what comes to our mind is about profit, for example. Or we talk about the long-term goals and objective of organization. And we also relate the word strategic when we hear it is got to do with the meeting the objective, meeting the vision, and also try to make sure that we realize our mission of the organization. So today, after completing this sharing session, you should be able to, the first one, is to outline the steps in the strategic management process and how it relates to strategic human resource management. The second one that you're going to gain is you're going to know how to explain strategic human resource management. The third one, you'll be able to explain what a high performance work system is and why it is important. Do you know that in human resource management, the challenge for the human resource practitioner is actually to know what is the strategic plan of an organization. A strategic plan defined as a company's plan or an organization plan for how it will match its internal strengths and weaknesses with external opportunities and threats in order to maintain a competitive advantage. So the three basic questions in planning that normally the strategic people will ask is the first one, what is your current business position? The second question is that, what is our future business position and how to reach the future business position? So these three important questions normally will be asked for the strategies in the organization. And the strategies normally is consists of the top managers. And the top managers share this strategic plan with the HR people and also all the head of departments. So basically what does I'm trying to say here is that what I'm trying to say here is actually there is actually a discussion or a sharing session between the top managers and also all the head of departments in order to move forward to achieve the vision and mission of the organization. In order for us to understand strategic human resource management, let me bring you to what does it mean by strategic management process. With, we have to know first what is the meaning of strategic management. Strategic management means is the process of identifying and executing the organization missions by matching its capability with the demands of its environment. Meaning to say that whatever that we have, the resources that we have, the capabilities that we have in the organization, we have to make sure that it is in line of what the company and the organization long-term vision so that we don't overuse things or we don't, in fact, underutilize our resources. So the strategic management process, I would like to repeat, is the process of identifying and executing the organization mission by matching your own capabilities with the demands of the environment. And what does it mean Why, when we talk about strategy? Strategy is actually defined as a course of action. And normally the company long-term plan for how it will balance its internal strength and the weaknesses with its external opportunities and threat to maintain its competitive advantage. Simple. I will give you an example. Example is that you have to ask yourself, ask the company, what is your strength? And what also the weaknesses of your organization? And how we can optimize the external opportunities that we have? And also we have to know what is the threat that we are facing from the competitor. Then we will plan in terms of our human resource and also, for example, other resources planning to move forward 
to achieve what is actually being visual, vis being planned and also what we're going to actually achieve in the future. Strategic management, as you can see, we have a process to achieve the vision of the organization and in strategic management tasks, normally we have to undergo seven steps. The first step is to define the business and its mission. The second one, we have to perform externals and internal audits. The third one, we have to formulate our new business and mission statement. The fourth one is to translate the mission into a strategic goal. The fifth one, we have to formulate a strategy, a human resource strategy or the organization strategy to achieve our strategic goals. The sixth and the seventh one is to implement. After we have implemented whatever it is being planned, then we have to evaluate our performance. I'm going to explain to you later the steps taken for the strategic management process. As you can see, step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five consists of, and we need to do our strategic planning. As you can see, step six, that is implementing of the strategy and evaluating of our performance. We really need to have the strategic executions and also evaluations. That is very clear in our so-called graphic illustration. The first step is to define the current business. We got to define what is our current business. So normally the decisions is, will be on the products and the services to provide. And how are we going to sell them? where to sell them and product and services that we have to think is we have to think the product and services that is so different and unique from our competitors example that i'm giving here is when rolex sells a high price quality watches versus seiko which is also in the watch industries they are selling in in, in expensive but innovative watches so as you can see that we got to know where we're heading and what kind of product that we're going to produce and we're going to offer to the publics and also it's got to do with services what kind of unique services that we're going to make sure that we have so that we can compete in the market the examples that i'm going to discuss with you with a short example is a asia okay a asia is as you can see is one of the award-winning and largest low fare airlines in the asia expanding rapidly since 2001. With a fleet of 72 aircraft, AirAsia flies to over 61 domestic and international destinations with 108 routes and operates over 400 flights daily from hubs located in Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia. So AirAsia in this example is an award-winning organization that we are going to later on tell about what is AirAsia vision and AirAsia mission. AirAsia business philosophy or tagline is now everyone can fly. As you can see, the tagline should be very catchy and also can when the consumers or the customers hear about the tagline, they feel so warm and they want to fly with AirAsia. The mission statement, sorry, the vision statement is to be the largest low-cost airline in Asia and serving the 3 billion who are currently underserved with poor connectivity and high fares. As you can see, the vision statement is very alive because they have this largest to become the largest low-cost airline. So meaning to say that we need to know also for example, we, if we are in HR department, we need to know how we're going to strategize ourselves, our manpower, our resources in order to support a Asia top management vision. That is to be the largest low-cost airline in Asia. Next, I'm going to discuss with you the mission of a Asia. Let me share with you the a Asia mission statement. A Asia mission statement defined on their intention to be the best company to work for where, whereby employees are treated as part of a big family, create a globally recognized Asian brand to attain the lowest cost so that everyone can fly with A Asia and maintain the highest quality product, embracing technology to reduce costs and enhance service level. As you can see, the mission statement talk about treating employees 
as part of a big family. So when HR department have this kind of mission that is being carried out by in Asia, we are the HR people, the HR practitioners must make sure that this is happening in the organization of in Asia. We have to make sure that there is activities that leads to this particular mission. So strategic key modes of management, one of them, one of them, the step is that to link whatever the activities of human resource management with the company mission. And in this example, we are linking our activities, our HR planning with a Asia long-term vision and mission statement. Strategic management process also got to do with our step two, that is to perform internal and external audits. This is where we have to analyze our internal and external situations of our organization using SWOT analysis. What is SWOT? SWOT, it means that S stand for strength, W stand for weaknesses, O for opportunities, and T for threat. So we are going to explain, I'm going to give you an example how to use SWOT to perform our internal and external audits. Looking at the charts, as you can see that, I'm going to give you an example for you to understand is that if you are, we are a manufacturing organization and we want to know what is our strength, weaknesses, opportunity and threat. For example, I give here if, we are, if our strength is we have a research group and our research group is outstanding and good, so our strength, the one that I'm going to list down is our research group is very strong. The second one, if we actually evaluate our internal weaknesses, we found out that there's a lot of aging machineries lay out there in our factory. So our weaknesses is we having these aging uh, machineries. And when we look at our organization from the external point of view, we will find out what is the opportunities and the threat that we have. For example, we have an opportunity to expand our businesses or organization in other countries so expanding for example to China is our opportunities what is our threat the threat for example if there is going on out there people who are actually combining themselves or people are merging there is an acquisitions and mergers going on out there when there is a your best competitors out there merge together and form a single company so basically you have to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses that is from the internals and the externals, you have to got to look at your opportunities and your threat. The third step in our strategic management process is to formulate a new business mission and its vision. After we have actually looked at ourselves, looking at our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunity and our threat, we are looking at, we have to create a new visions and mission. And what is visions and mission? As you can see just now, as also has been explained before that, in Asia, for example, that a vision statement is normally a general statement of its intended direction that evokes emotional feelings in organization member. For example, just now in Asia is about creating, for example, the belongingness in the organization. So that's why in Asia have treated human resource as a part of their so-called visions and mission of the organization. Where else? Missions spells out who is the company is, what it does, and where it is headed. So the mission normally will explain the word of how we're going to achieve what is being translated in our vision. So that's what does now have been explained the vision of A Asia and the missions of A Asia. Step four is to translate the mission into the strategic goals. If the organization mission is to make quality products, what does this mission mean? For each department in terms of how to improve quality if overall is to make a quality product means to say that each of the department have to work very hard in order to achieve to make sure that they produce a quality manpower to produce a quality products step five is got to do with formulate your strategies to achieve your strategic goals and what is strategy as you can see strategy means a course of action and it shows how a company or an organization will move from the present businesses to the new businesses. It's very simple to understand. I will give you an example. For example, that just now, if your organization, for example, is cutting costs, they don't want to hire a new people coming into the organization, what you have to do as a part of the organization, as the people in charge of HR, for example, you have to make sure that you freeze hiring. You don't hire people anymore to come to the organization. So that means by freezing the recruitment. 
it is aligned, your strategy in HR department must be aligned with the direction of the organization as a whole. Step six, that is the implemented strategies. I think it's very, very important because we got to implement whatever that we have planned. So implementing the strategies, for example, is putting whatever that we plan into action. Example here is hiring people and building plans, adding new product, for example. That is actually implementing the strategy. And normally, when you want to implement the strategy in your organization, it will involve all the management function that is planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. As you can see, for example, that if you want to recruit more people in the organization, you need to know how many human resource people, how many manpower that, or how many headcount you want to actually recruit. And you've got to organize when they come into the organization, where you're going to put them, and what kind of job and task or responsibility that you're going to assign to them. You also got to lead. You have to help a leader or head of department to manage this particular staff. And at the end of the day, there is a performance appraisals that is actually come into picture. It's got to do with the controlling purpose in the management function. Step seven is the most critical part where you have to evaluate your performance after whatever has been done. So the success of strategies might very much depend on changes in external factors. For example, the new trends may reduce demand in one product and increase the demand for another product. And why is it the strategic control necessary? Because it is a process of assessing progress towards strategic goals and taking corrective action. And managers have to study this new situation and make adjustment to it. For example, I'll give you an example here is that for example that you have actually launching a new product and that product is not working in the market. People do not like the product. Then you've got to change your strategy. You have, to, you have to do a research, for example. Why is that they don't like the product? And do you have to change the product? What kind of product that you have to change? And as you can see also, those days people use typewriter. Nowadays, we don't have typewriter. I think it's obsolete already. In fact, the last factory in America have closed down. The typewriter have not been produced anymore now. Because of what? People do not use typewriter anymore. People use computer or PCs. So whatever that you want to do in your organization, have to make sure it is in tandem with what is changes out there. Or now, the terms that we always use is globalization issue. So as a customers, we, for example, from the externals, we always look for a competitive product. We want something that is new in the market that is according to our needs and our wants. So the organization have to position themselves strategically, make sure that they have actually win the consumers or the customers in the market. I'm going to give you an example, as you can see, strategies in brief. The examples the company like Dell, eBay, General Electric, Software Airlines, Vanguard and Walmart. As you can see, for example, there, the strategic principles is to be direct. eBay got to do with focus on trading communities. General Electric strategic principles say, be number one or number two in every industry in which we compete or get out. Where Southwest Airlines talk about meets customers, short haul travel needs and at fast competitive with the cost of automobile travel. Vanguard and Walmart talk about unmatchable value for the investor owner and Walmart actually stress about low prices every day. So this is basically the example of strategies in brief for all the company that I've mentioned just now to all of you. I also would like to share with all of you types of strategic planning. There's three types of strategic planning. The first one is called corporate strategy, the second one is competitive strategy, and the third one is called functional strategy. As you can see, the corporate strategy is on the top and it's followed by the competitive strategy for each of the divisions and each of the divisions also have their own functional strategies that they have to carry out. As you can see from the diagram, corporate strategy is got to do with the top managers and normally it is a company-wide strategy and it identifies the portfolio of businesses that in total comprise the company and the ways in which these businesses related to each other. So comp corporate strategy is got to do with company-wide. I'm going to explain to you what does it mean by corporate strategy. And examples of the company strategy or company-wide strategy, first of all, is consolidation strategy. 
diversification strategy, vertical integration strategy, and geographic expansion strategy. Examples of the corporate strategy for geographic expansion is that, for example, if that particular organization is in Kuala Lumpur and they want to open a branch in United States of America, so when they're expanding geographically, it means that that particular organization is utilizing its company uh, wide strategy or the corporate strategy. Another types of strategic planning that I'm going to discuss here is got to do with business level or competitive strategy. What is competitive strategy? Competitive strategy normally happen at the division level and it is a business level strategy. It is identify how to build and strengthen the business long-term competitive position in the marketplace. As you can see, the competitive strategies is actually to strengthen the positions of an organization in the marketplace. The first one normally they do is a cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy or focus strategy. What is the difference between three of these strategy? The first one, cost leadership, has got to do with the organization is aims to become the low cost leader in an industry. As we discussed before, I've given you an example, very clear one, is in A Asia. A Asia is the one who having this so-called competitive strategy that is cost leadership strategy. The second one is the differentiation strategy where an organization seeks to be unique in its industry along dimension that are widely valued by buyers. And the third one is the focus strategy where a firm seeks to give sorry to carve out a market niche and compete by providing a product or service customers can get in no other way the third level of strategies is a functional strategies functional strategies identify the basic causes of action that each department will pursue in order to help the business attain its competitive goal for example that if you are at the top uh, down there at the bottom there we have to support for example that the middle and also the top managers the direction of them where they are going we are the person down there who have to actually plan our activities to, to support the long-term visions and mission of the organization that's why it's got to do with business functional strategies who support the business level strategies and the business level strategies will support the corporate wide strategy after i have explained to you the concept of strategic management and all the steps actually we have to take in the strategic management what is got to do with human resource management human resource and its competitive advantage what does it mean by competitive advantage in hr competitive advantage in human resource mean any factor that allows an organization to differentiate its product or services from those of its competitors to increase market share Example here that I'm going to give to you in relate to human resource management is that if we have an excellent and outstanding human resource or superior human resource, this is very important source of competitive advantage. And later on, I'm going to explain to all of you about the linkage of human resource management with the organizational goals vision and mission that's what it means strategic human resource management in this example i give examples of toyota self-managed team where they have this super performance of human resource performance in their particular so-called product production department where they call themselves as a self-managed team the self-management managed team itself in toyota have actually created a competitive advantage in Toyota as an organization and also throughout the world when they compete with other for example they compete with Honda so it means that Toyota have a superior human resource as a source of competitive advantage the most interesting part about strategic human resource management is the linking of human resource management aspect with the strategic goals and objective in order to improve business performance and develop organizational cultures that foster innovation and flexibility. So, in human resource management, we have to formulating and executing the HR system. Example here is HR policies and HR activities that produce the employee competencies and behaviors the company needs to achieve its strategic aims. In the diagram, it is showing very clearly how to link the corporate and HR strategies. 
as you can see on the top there has a company's competitive environment of course it's got to do with economic political demography competitive and technological trends and as it relates with the strategic situations of an organization and the internal strengths and weaknesses of the organization finally all the organization out there want to perform the best in their so-called market or in their industry so how human resource management come into picture okay we come into picture actually by actually managing the human resource the people that work in that organization are we going to expand geographically in terms of manpower are we going to cut costs for example or are we going to diversify our business so this particular questions in fact the company strategic plan will relate to what we are doing in human resource department are we actually in fact going to make sure that we are going to recruit more people or are we going to actually freeze our recruitment this is actually what we call human resource planning human resource activities that very very much related to the strategic human resource and also related to the organization as a whole normally if we are working in a human resource department normally we have this call strategic roles that we have to play as the hr managers normally the effective hr managers are able to handle a larger portfolio and they be able also to work closely with top management people to formulate and implement company strategic plan two basic planning roles that normally the hr top people will do is that in terms of the strategic executions and also the strategic formulations the first one is the strategy execution role what is it the hr department strategies policies and activities must make sense in terms of the company's corporate and competitive strategies and they must support these strategies for example the like a issue just now when i talk about they have to be for example the mission is to be outstanding in terms of people and in terms of manpower in a asia in order to provide the best service in the a line industry so the hr departments must make sure that when they recruit when doing the hr planning the selection of the hr people the people who come in and join a asia must be up to that expectation because the strategic execution role of the hr practitioner to make sure whatever is being hired whatever being so called recruited in a asia must be in tandem with the vision statement and the mission or the visions of a asia in a long run do you know that apart from the strategy execution role we a hr people have also to do a strategy formulation role we the hr practitioners normally help the top management to formulate the strategy in varieties of ways example here is that we also supply a competitive intelligence that may be useful in the strategic planning process we also supply information regarding the company's internal human strengths and weaknesses of our employee and we also build a persuasive case that shows how in specific and measurable terms the firm's hr activities can and do contribute to creating value for the organization for example in a banking industry for example if you want to hire a people or a customer service officers that provide the best customer service ever in the market what we have to do we have to tell the hr department or the hr department itself have actually to be involved in the planning process where they hire the best people or the candidates that have this pleasant and also friendly and also pay patient uh, so called characteristics during the recruitment process so hr department actually involved in the planning process and telling the top management what they have to do in order to get in the right people in order to carry out the missions and the visions of the organization because at the end of it the main power play an important role to carry out whatever has been planned by the top management in order for us to help the top management we have to create a strategic hr systems normally components of the hr process is like the hr professional who have the strategic and other skills the hr policies and activities that comprise the hr system itself for example the activities like recruitment selection training and reward must be tandem with strategic 
or the strategy that the organization wants and also the employee behaviors and competencies that the company's strategy requires. This component of HR process very, very important in order to work well with the overall company direction in the long run. Normally, in an organization, towards the end, we want to create the best employee behavior. That is the employee competencies, values, motivations, and behavior that required by the company's strategic plan. So we have to start actually from the beginning, that is the HR function, that the HR professionals in the organization with the strategic combine the strategic management function and they will come up with the best system ever that is called the HR system and the system is called high performance work system high performance work system consisting of strategically aligned HR policies practices and activities as you can see the HR function is related to HR system and the HR system will definitely will have the final outcome is the best employee behaviors. What is the meanings of high performance work system? High performance work systems means the company should create a HR system that fits its needs. And also it trend towards installing HR system that broadly share by many characteristics. And if an objective of this system is to maximize employees' competencies and commitment and also the employers or the organization expect the HR managers to introduce HR activities that create value for the company such as more profit or bigger market share. So in this case, it means that high performance work system actually help the organization to create more value added to the systems and the company as a whole. So how do we involve in this high performance work system? Normally, the high performance work system require a high involvement employee practice such as job enrichment and team-based organization. And also, in high performance work system, people are highly committed or committed in their work practices such as the improved employee development communication and also disciplinary, disciplinary practices. And also, in this high performance work system, we have flexible work assignment. You, I think all of you have remember or now knows that out there, there is a flexible work arrangement have been done out there where people can clock in and clock out from the organization according to their flexibility and their time. And other practices that involve the high performance work system include those that foster skill workforce and expanded opportunities to use those skills. How do you know a high performance work system is a high performance work system? In a chart, if tell you all the characteristics of a high performance work organization, that is number one, they should have a multi-skill work teams. The second one, they have empowered their workers. The third one, the employees is given extensive training. The fourth one, they have 100% of customer satisfaction. The fifth one, all the employees is very committed to the quality of what they're working on. And the final one is that they have the labor management corporation. All of these six characteristics is a characteristics of a high performance work organization. As a HR manager, if we already have a high performance work system, we have to make sure that we have to translate the so-called our actions and also the behaviors and also the activities of human resources in tandem with the strategy of the organization. So the first one is that HR managers to translate the company strategy into employee competencies and behaviors. These employee competencies and behaviors into specific HR policies and practices to achieve company goals. As you can see, the HR manager also has to carry the four management functions that is planning, leading, organizing, and controlling. As you can see in the diagram, the first step is to formulate the business strategy. The questions that they have to ask is that what are the strategic goals of the business? And the second step will be to identify the workforce requirements. Question that will have to ask to themselves is that what employee competencies and behaviors must HR deliver to enable the business to reach its goal? 
And the third one is we have to formulate the HR strategic policies and activities. Questions that we should ask is which HR strategies and practices will produce this employee competencies and behavior. And the final one, when we come to the controlling part, we have to develop the detailed HR scorecard measures. The question that we must ask as a HR manager is, how can HR measure whether it is executing well for the business in terms of producing the required workforce competencies and behaviors? So translating the strategy into HR policy and practice is very, very important in order for us to sustain our organizations to survive in the market especially in this globalization era that we have to maintain that we have the right policy the hr policy and practices in order to support the longevity of our organization so in summary actually we have talked about today about strategic human resource management and in order for us to understand the strategic human resource management just now we have discussed in length about the strategic goals the mission the vision and also the seven steps that we have to go through in our strategic management process we also have actually linked the strategic or the human resource activities with the strategic direction of the organization the second one we talk about is actually about the human resource high performance management system and the final one just now we also have actually discussed about the linkage between our hr practices and policies policies with the directions of the organization i hope all of you have got the meaning of strategic human resource management and you can practice it in your organization thank you